Welcome to the Emergency Management Do One Thing Personal Video Training Series. My name is Quentin Graham. As an emergency manager, it is our goal to provide continuous training towards making a disaster resilient installation. What this means is that as an installation team, we respond together to quickly save lives, mitigate the hazard, and return to normal operations. Because we, the installations, are the backbone for the warfighter. This series focuses on completing one thing each month to become more prepared. We use the Do One Thing program. Now, for the next essential topic, your instructor. Hi everybody, this is Quentin Graham again, and we're doing uh, Do One Thing. This month's topic is food for the month of April. So just remember, these are small steps to prepare your community for emergencies. Taking small steps now can make a big difference for you and your family in a disaster. As we look at our Do One Thing calendar for this month, our whole topic is food. So you can kind of see what the other months are kind of in play for us. So why an emergency food supply? In a disaster, you may not be able to get to a store. You may not have a stove or a microwave for cooking. Having an emergency food supply ready doesn't have to be hard or, or expensive. By taking small steps, you can make sure your family, including your pets, will have what they need when disaster strikes. So try and choose one thing to do this month. So the first thing you can do is buy a three-day emergency food supply for your household. Make sure that you kind of like the food because some of them are don't taste that good. So try it. See if you actually like it because you're going to be eating it in an emergency. Take steps now to make sure that food in your refrigerator and freezer will stay safe in a power outage. Or number three, make sure you can meet any special dietary needs in your household in a disaster. So option one, buy a three day emergency food supply for your household. Well, um, how much food? Have an emergency food supply that'll meet the needs of your household for three days without outside help. So set it aside. You can either put it in a bag or a box or make sure you keep it in the cupboard and you just have extra, extra and you rotate it as part of your regular food supply. So how much food? You know better than anyone else how much food your family needs for three days. Create a three-day meal plan for your family using shelf-stable foods and post it inside your cupboard. You can get a lot of these shelf-stable foods from your local grocery store or a lot of different other places to include several places that are online. Make sure you always keep those items on hand. Don't forget about your pets. They need to eat also. So we're going to talk about bus, balance, usability, and shelf life. Eating right is even more important during a disaster when you and your family members are under stress and may be doing things you're not used to doing. It is extremely important to eat right for any health condition that you might have. They can become worse with stress or even a poor diet. So let's kind of look at this for a second. Balance usability, shelf life. Bus. Balance. It includes a variety of foods from each of the basic food groups. Include comfort foods like chocolate or graham crackers or high energy foods like nuts and protein bars. These should not be the biggest part of your food supply. Usability. Choose items that don't have to be heated or kept cold. That don't need a, a lot of water to prepare. Um, so things like canned or dried meat, dry cereal, canned vegetables, or a lot of other type of canned or shelf-stable type items that you can use. Make sure you have a manual can opener if you're including canned foods though. Some can openers can be hard to use, so make sure it, it works for you. Or you buy the cans that have the pop-top lids. That's also very useful. So shelf life. Uh, you need to make sure you check the expiration dates on each of the food items. Canned goods normally last several years, 
but it's also a good idea to write when you put it into your system so that you know how long it's been there and make sure that you can use those first. So try and use or replace the items before that expiration date. So that's bus, balance, usability, and shelf life. So option number two, take steps now to make sure the food in your refrigerator and freezer will stay safe in a power outage. Well, how do you do that? So keeping food safe. When the power goes out, temperatures in your refrigerator and freezer will start to go up, even if the doors are closed. If your refrigerator is more than 41 degrees Fahrenheit for more than four hours, food like meat, milk, mayonnaise, leftovers, etc., they may not be safe to eat. If your freezer is below 41 degrees Fahrenheit for more than one or two days, food may not be safe to eat either. So how do I keep my food safe? If frozen food still has ice crystals in it, it should be safe to eat. Always check the color and the smell of food, especially meat. When in doubt, throw it out. Make sure you dispose of food where animals can't get to it. Steps to take now. Buy thermometers for your refrigerator and freezer. If you know a storm is coming that may cause a power outage, turn down the temperature in your refrigerator and freezer. The colder it is when the power goes out, the longer it'll take for it to get warm. Keeping containers of ice in your freezer will keep the temperature colder longer. So when the power goes out, you can cover your refrigerator and freezer in newspaper or blankets to keep the cold in. Make sure vents are clear in case the power comes back on. Try to avoid opening the doors and doing the, uh, the search function of leaning against the door and seeing how many items are in there. Another thing is if it's cold weather, you can also take the stuff, put it into an igloo, and put that your cooler or igloo outside. So one thing about that's very important, if you don't know the temperature of your refrigerator, and was off for more than four hours, perishable food should be thrown away. Eating perishable food that has gotten too warm can cause food poisoning. And nobody likes that, even if it's refrozen or cooked. When in doubt, throw it out. Remember, 41 degrees Fahrenheit. So, option number three. Make sure you can meet any special dietary needs in your household in a disaster. So, special dietary needs. Well, there can be serious health effects for some people if they don't have the right food available, such as allergies, you know, peanuts, dairy, eggs, type, etc., disease treatment, metabolic disorders, or special textures. So, what are those special dietary needs? Well, talk to your healthcare provider or nutritionist about non perishable food options for special dietary needs. So other dietary needs is include a description of your medical condition and your diet in your emergency kit. That just helps when you have to evacuate and it'll help shelter workers or others understand your needs. So special equipment may be needed to properly prepare food for people with certain health conditions a blender, food scale, feeding tubes, etc. So keep extra preparation equipment in your go bag or at a friend's or relative's house in case you have to evacuate. Well, emergency preparedness isn't a machine that has to have all of its parts to work. It's a toolbox. And even having one or two tools is better than none. Small steps make a difference. So thank you for tuning in this month. And next month, we're going to be discussing work, school, and the community. They can, disasters can happen at any time. And if you're away from home, would you know where to find safe shelter locations? Will you be able to reach the people who count on you? Learn how to make sure you and your loved ones are safe in a disaster, no matter where you are. For more information, again, my name is Quentin Graham, CRMB Depot Emergency Manager, and there's a lot of great information on the Do One Thing website. 
at www.doonething.com.